So we've just looked at what a light year is, which is the distance that light travels in one year. It's a huge unit of measurement. And we were just talking about how we look up in the sky, we're looking back in time. Now let's take a look at some of these objects that we see that are even f larger than stars, which are called galaxies. Now a galaxy is uh, just a large amount of uh, stars, and gas. It's mainly hydrogen gas. So it's mainly just hydrogen. So a large amount of stars and gas. Now what do I mean by large amount? Billions of stars. They're on the order of billions of stars here. So lots and lots of stars and gas are all sort of orbiting. Okay, so these are here all orbiting. Now, are they orbiting one central thing? Nope. They're actually, they all have their own mass and they're all affecting each other. So they all sort of orbit around. Now, galaxies can have different shapes. So they can have shapes like, um, they can be spirals. So in other words, they look something like, you know, some sort of nice, pretty sort of spiral like this. But they don't all have to be spiral. They can actually be elliptical. So these tend to be really large ones, so they're gigantic. It's actually thought that an elliptical galaxy, because they're so much bigger than spirals, it's actually thought that if you know some, a bunch of spiral galaxies meet each other and sort of mix up and all the things, gravitationally speaking, get all mixed up, we think that that could be an elliptical galaxy. We can also have irregular galaxies, which are just galaxies with weird shapes, so maybe it does something like well, some sort of weird looking shape, so something that doesn't just fit elliptical or spiral. And we can even have interacting now that means that gravity is affecting uh, two or more galaxies. Which means if galaxies come close enough to each other, then the actual materials in the galaxies can be sort of whipped around and sort of moved. So I think that's pretty interesting. But now when we look at these galaxies, let's actually take a look at our own. So our Milky Way galaxy, that's what we call it. And this is where we live. And remember I told you before that this is not a real picture of it. This is sort of a schematic of what we think it would look like. But this is you. Now how big is our own galaxy? Well now we can start talking about it since we know units of light years. So diameter is on the order so that's why I'm going to say sort of approximately, because these are very, very large distance here. So it's a little bit difficult, but on the order of um, around 100,000 light years. So around 100,000 light years, which means the light from one end uh, to the other. Okay, if you look this one here, this is around uh, 100,000 light years here, or something like that. It's around that, if we consider this distance from right here, like this. Um, that's a very, very far distance. So it's around 100,000 light years in diameter, but it's actually very flat. So ours is actually what's called a spiral galaxy. Now it's shaped, uh, I mean, from the top view, it would be seen as a very wide thing like this, but from the side view, if we saw it from the side, it would actually be some sort of, you know, sort of disc like this right here. So from the side, it's actually quite thin. There's a thicker part in the middle, but it's actually quite thin. And this thickness right here is only around 100 light years. So which means it's a lot, a lot wider. And there's this very, very, very thin uh, sort of plate. Maybe I'll just get rid of that. Maybe that looks a little bit weird. So it's thickness right here. That thickness is around a hundred light years thick, whereas it's only around a uh, hundred thousand light years. Oh, sorry, it's around a hundred thousand light years in diameter. I think that's actually even smaller than this, but this is just to give an idea how thin it is this way, whereas how fat it is this way. Now, if we look at this, it has around, so our galaxy has around, so approximately, that's why it's a squiggly sort of thing here, um, around 300 billion stars. Now this is difficult to know exactly because it's hard to count them all. And also stars are dying and being born all the time. So this is actually, I mean, a galaxy isn't something static. It's actually dynamic. In fact, in a lot of these pictures right here, they make the red stuff is usually where there's lots of stars being formed. But uh, there's around 300 billion stars. And it takes us uh, 
around. So I mean, this is roughly, it takes us roughly 200 million years to orbit. In other words, where we are, let's say right here, it takes us around 200 million years to go around and then back again, which means the last time we were in this same sort of position, you know, there were dinosaurs running around on the Earth. That's that kind of cool. And we have a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And that's something fairly new that we know now, quite for sure now. So supermassive black hole at the center. How massive? It's about, well, it's a few million masses of the sun. Is there some sort of black hole in the middle? Now, does that mean everything is sort of spiraling inwards to go into it? Not at all. A black hole, I mean, it's a weird thing, yes, but orbits can still be happy, sort of things can be happily orbiting. And it's not like we're all orbiting this one central black hole. It's a little bit complicated, but every single object in the galaxy is attracting and affecting every other object. So we're all sort of in this, you know, sort of cosmic dance going all the way around, and we're all affecting each other. So it's not like there's this one black hole that's making us go around. Not at all. We wouldn't necessarily need the black hole there. We could just keep going. Now we're going to talk about black holes later in another video, but just to give an idea, this is our own galaxy. Now, why is it called the Milky Way? I'm going to actually show you a video, first of all, of something. I'm just going to show you that we can actually see the Milky Way in the sky. So I'm going to show you this right here. This is, it's called Texas Star Party. It's a video that someone did. Um, again, this is um, time lapse. So this is using a fisheye lens, which means these are people here, sort of nerds who are out and uh, looking at telescopes. Uh, by the way, I would love to have been there because I like to use my own telescopes. So when I use the word nerd, sort of uh, reverently. But if you look at this now, okay, of course the sky is going around. Now we saw that before. That's because we're rotating. But look at this thing that's rising in the sky. I don't know if you've ever seen that in the sky before. But it's pretty much always there. It's just a matter of, is the night clear enough to see this? So look at that. That's actually what the sky looks like if it's a really clear night. If you live somewhere where there's clear skies. Oh, and of course it's daytime and everybody wakes up and, oh, sorry, sets up, uh, takes away their telescopes and then goes home and goes to sleep. But then, so if we look at this one then, this is, this is how the Milky Way looks from Earth. So I took a screenshot from that video. So if we look at that then, this is what it looks like from Earth. So from Earth, this is actually the Milky Way. Now, the Greeks thought it looked like milk being poured across the sky. And it kind of does, I guess, if you use your imagination. Now, what is this that you're seeing? What I want to show you is that this blows my mind. So if you're ever somewhere clear enough to see this, so if it's a very, very clear night, and you go up and look at the sky, don't just go from inside to outside, look up at the sky and say, nope, I can't see it. You have to give your eyes some time to adjust to the light. So go outside and give it 10 or 15 minutes. So put on a nice warm jacket, uh, maybe have a cup of coffee. Try not to use a bright flashlight because you want to get your eyes used to the dark. And take a look up and see, it may not be so obvious. You may have to sort of look over here and your eyes might detect something sort of large going across the sky. But you can see this, this is the Milky Way. And what this actually is, this is the coolest thing, it's actually you who's sitting over here and you're looking at the center of the galaxy. So when you're looking at this, now it's difficult because this right here is a big spiral from the top view, but we're not at the top, we're right in the middle of this spiral, which means when we're looking at it, we see it this way. Now I'm gonna show you another video to just show you sort of the, how we go from this view to what we actually see. So this is actually a little animation. Now keep in mind, this is not a real thing. This is a little animation that uh, I think it's NASA that made this. So they sort of start off and say, what if you were in a spaceship and sort of you're above the galaxy and you're sort of zooming into the galaxy and flying right in it. This is supposed to represent our sun right here. Okay, so if you're sort of zooming into our sun, this right here is what you would see. Now look at this then. As we look into the center of the galaxy, there's lots of dust in the way. There's actually dust all over the place. In fact, uh, when I did my own thesis, my supervisor, um, her specialty, believe it or not, is cosmic dust. In other words, she's an expert in this dust that's floating around in space. So if you look at this, there's lots of bright stars. I mean, there's so many of them, we can't actually see them as dots. They just look like some sort of bright halo like this. 
But what's cool about it is there's lots of dust in the way. So if you look at this, if we're on our own star, on our own uh, sun, for example, or orbiting at least, here's us sort of going in orbit. As we look in the right direction, we can see this. And that is precisely this real picture here. So this, when you see this Milky Way in the sky, you're actually and literally looking at the center of our galaxy. So I hope that makes some sense. So see this dark stuff sort of floating through this light stuff? That's the real picture. And that was the sort of end of the animation. That was what this uh, thing right here was supposed to look like, right? this little uh, video that I just showed you. So I think that's actually really, really cool. Now you can't always see this everywhere. You have to go somewhere where there's not much of what we call light pollution. When I mean light pollution, I mean places where there's so much light from cities, you can't always see this. So my wife and I, we went to uh, Nepal, for example, and there we saw this every night. And that's because we were in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we were in an area where, you know, there's no towns or anything. So we saw this all the time. And I've seen this sometimes in Canada and sometimes in Denmark, where I currently live. We can see this. So take a look at the sky one night where you are and see, can you see the Milky Way? If so, you're literally seeing the center of our galaxy. How awesome is that? Now, it turns out if you want to know sort of where the center of the galaxy should be, you can always get apps. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are using either iPhones or Android phones or something else. And I know, for example, for my Android phone, I have an app. It's free. Uh, it's called Google Sky Map. So, uh, I mean, I'm not being paid by them, I wish. But uh, it's a cool app where you can actually uh, it uses the accelerometers on your phone. And so what it does is you just hold your phone up to the sky and it sort of tells you what every star is and it tells you where the Milky Way is. It's really cool. And they have the similar things. Uh, it tells you what each star is and where the planets are and where galaxies and nebulas are. So um, they have that as well for the iPhone, but I think you have to pay for it at the moment at least. But I think it's really, really cool that you can look up at the sky and... And like I said before, you're literally looking back in time. You know, when you look at these stars, you're looking back in time. And if you ever get to see this thing, you're looking at the center of our galaxy. In other words, on the top view, you're here looking this way towards the black hole. It turns out if you know your constellations well, if you can ever find Sagittarius, that constellation, it looks like a teapot. But if you find Sagittarius in the sky, it turns out Sagittarius is where the actual center is. That's where the black hole is. It's a place we call Sagittarius A star. But in any case, that is a quick little intro to uh, galaxies. In the next video, I'm going to show you some pretty pictures of other galaxies.